right, we're back here with Build 206 Media. Once again, we're here with uh, Steve Sneed and Rico Bembry. So we're going to jump back into these uh, questions. we got a big uh, uprising right now with, you know, police brutality and, mm-hmm. and everything else. It's a crazy election cycle. Like, you know, how are you guys in a pandemic, like, which is impacting our community very heavily. Right. And yeah. so, um, you know, w- what do you guys think about, you know, everything that's going on at this time? Like, what do you, like, you know? <laughs> <don't remember. laughs> Ooh, there's a lot <laughs> That's a whole show in itself, huh? So are we yeah. talking about locally, regionally, or nationally? I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer to your wisdom on that. Whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna talk about, man. Well, I would spark with this, is that it's it hurt. It hurts a bit, man. It's it's not no, it's not hurt. It's disappointment to see that in this country, for as many years as I've been alive that we haven't progressed further in the advanced thought process around how racism is so prevalent in right. every institution in America. Right. 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 And for people who don't understand that it is, that are asleep to that, they just have to be awakened to it, man. Because some things you can't explain by any other means other than uh, perpetuating um, white supremacy or racism. And that's my perspective. I don't speak for Steve. I speak for me. Right. And it's just so prevalent, man, in every single institution. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me how the issues of late and this awakenment and awakening and movement around Black Lives Matter, I've had friends or coworkers call me, man, that I haven't talked to in 45 years. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. And they're calling me to ask me about Black Lives Matter. And I'm saying, in 45 years, you haven't met a black person? (laughs) You can call and ask about this? Mm. What made you hearken back to me 45 years ago? Right. I don't get it. But I feel blessed that they call me. Right. I feel honored that you call me. Mm. But I don't understand that you don't have anybody else you can call. Mm. <laughs> man, I don't get that. 40 years later, right. Man, 40, yeah. 45 years later. Mm. I don't understand that. That really fires me up because I'm thinking, what kind of life am I leaving for my grandson and great-grandsons? Right. I get fired up about this. I'm going to let Steve answer from this perspective. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the thing it makes me think about is um, I, was, I, I saw Van Jones. A lot of people know who he is. You know, He's on CNN. I think it's CNN recently. But I saw him at a race and social justice conference a number of years ago, and he said something that stuck with me, which I think we're witnessing now, and it is, we hear this term, and I've heard it in the arts a lot, is the changing demographics, right? The browning of America, that we are becoming a a minority, majority country. Yes. And it's supposed to happen in 2040 or 35. 2035. 2035 is supposed to happen, right? 2035. But the thing he said was, it's not going to just happen like that. It's going to be gradual. That's right. There will be signs of it, right? (laughs) (laughs) From now on, you know, until that time that it actually changes over. Right. So what's happening, and this is what we're seeing now, is people are having fear white people in specific are right. having fear about this because they're seeing it. You know, they see like more brown folks in so many areas of life and they're right. like, well, whoa, what's happening? I'm losing power. my power. Right, right. right. And, and what Van Jones said, he said, the thing is we have to realize is this is not going to be a smooth transition. It's going to be difficult. And he said to the crowd, he said, you know, you guys, he's looking at, this is in Seattle. He said, you guys are some nice people. I can tell by the looks on your face. You're some nice people out here. You want to continue to not be like them. You're going to have to be different. You're going to have to be able to usher in this change and not be like how they are. Right. Right. And he said, ultimately, all this is about love. Mm. This is a love movement, mm. this whole race and social justice, the work you're doing. It's ultimately about love. So um, that really stuck with me because when you're looking at things like what you're seeing with uh, the people protesting at the uh, election booths, right? They're going, I'm thinking, what, what are they doing? Why are you standing yeah, people outside? People are counting the, the vote. Booth? Right, people right. are counting the votes inside, <laughs> and they got flags and stuff. They're standing outside protesting. 
We're making sure that the vote is is clean and clear. Right. <laughs> but you're only doing that in Philly, and you're only doing yeah, that in places right. they want, where they, they want recounts <laughs> in places that they lost and stop voting and stop Come counting on, in the man. places right. we're about to lose. Right. Come on, what are we talking about, man? What what is this? <laughs> what, what is so that? there's no explanation for that other right. than what I explained earlier, right? The fear of losing their privilege. Come on, man. Yeah. What power is fear? Hold. Power hold. Fear is yeah. false evidence appearing real. Wow. What are you afraid of? Yeah, yeah. That a miracle will really be great? Right. Yeah, yeah. Not again, but be great? Right. Mm -hmm. Is that what the fear is? Yeah. Yeah. That's what the fear is. Because you want it yeah. to be something again, right? You're assuming that whatever it was was great. Is better yeah. than what it's gonna it's be. be. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. We're was saying, or is, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So we're saying all of the diversity that we have and the inclusivity that we have. Mm -hmm. My family is multicultural. Right. Yeah, my son, my grandkids, well. yeah. my yeah. great grandkids are mm -hmm. multicultural. Yeah. So I can't turn my eye on the folks who are asking me from 40 years ago because I have a multicultural family. Yeah. I respect them and bring them in. Right. It just surprises me. You know, it's just I'm just surprised by it. Yeah, like, yeah. huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like 40 years? Right. They're sending me pictures from me at parties 40 years ago. <laughs> and I'm saying... So you, you're, you're their black friend. Just to see, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. But I, got I got 40 black friends 40 years ago. So now, someone older told me this. They said, well, the people I worked with 40 years ago wouldn't even call me. Oh, yeah. So that's progress that you can't even see, young man. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. They would even call you. And that's the right. Pullman Porter train. <laughs> it's Pullman Porter, right? <laughs> and that's they right. know I still have that rebel. Mm. Right. They see me on TV with late night and working, doing the work, but right? They know they can call you. Right. See? Yeah. There's yeah. an opening. There's an right. opening there. Yeah. So that's, it, right. that's the beauty of it, man. You have to be patient. Mm. And I think what's going on now is there's a cataclysmic shift, man, because young people don't have the same level of. Um, uh, patience to allow mm -hmm. for passive aggressive racist behavior to occur. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're just mm -hmm. not having it. Cats right. in your generation and younger, you cats it, yeah. ain't that's, just having that's it. That's my like, issue. I'll, I I missed that Pullman Porter train. Right. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> so cats is like that's my now, issue. <laughs> yeah, they on some some whole different. You know, like. And realistically, just, you know, in our defense, like, we really shouldn't be having to deal with the same BS that you guys dealt with. That's you know my what point. Saying? That's so the issue, a different, you know? Yeah. You all have a different muscle. Yeah. Just like we have it, we have the Pullman Porter training, right. mm -hmm. but we don't have to be Pullman Porters. Right. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. ain't trying to be no Pullman Porter. I'm an yeah. RV driver and right. owner. <laughs> right. I'm a boat owner. Right. I'm a property owner. You see? Mm -hmm. So it's different. Yeah, right. Yeah. So right. you have the right to take what Steve and I build on our backs, right? Right. Uh -huh. And push the agenda further. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's how And that's it works. what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to, yeah. Man, yeah. I'm looking at the Black Lives Matter <laughs> movement and I'm saying, whoa. <laughs> I know. Man, it's the Paris, Ooh. London, <laughs> right. Korea, right. it's Japan, all China. Yeah. So you all are doing it different, man. Right. Yeah. It's a whole different ballgame now. And you say now. defund the police, which... It's like, it's what? Like, what? Whoa. What these kids like, talk about? You, you talking about defund the police? <laughs> what you but, but the reality is with that, just to add some context. Right. Mm. Langston in 89, late night in That's 90s. Right. That, that yeah. was public safety. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. That is public safety. That's what we're You're saying right. is like, let's put money in things upstream yeah. Yeah, to yeah. where people don't got to get traumatized and end mm -hmm. up in Purdy and all these other right. places where right. they're going to be more disenfranchised, and right? So it, let's So you all saying basically, Let's yeah. start over. Right. Yeah. Start with you're zero budget and rebuild it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because reform you, hasn't worked. Right. Because yes. if you just take and some of the true. money out, that's if you true. take some of the money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're still going to have in it this institution that's not working. Right. right. Yeah. So you're saying, let's just defund the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And start rebuild over. It. Right. That's true. Blow I mean, it up. I mean, education, <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. I mean, we spend a billion dollars. That's next on the slate. Right. We spend a billion in Seattle education. on education. Right. Yeah. And graduation rates probably hasn't changed since I was graduated. So, I mean, it's. Right. Ridiculous. You know, it's it's yeah. time to like reinvest, and we got what I see just talking to you guys and others. Like we have the yeah. the genius in our community to do what we right. we just need the resources. Just think yeah, what you right. guys could have done if they would have oh, said, man. "Here's eight hundred thousand for the roof, oh, and yeah, here's yeah, yeah. On, you know five oh. million dollars to do what you want to do." It Come on, been man, quicker, right? Yes. Easy. Been and, quicker and so I think that's where we're so, at is like. Mm -hmm. And the generation behind, that's really what I'm hoping I can facilitate with the relationships that I have with yeah. elders 
And then the mm-hmm. next generation of leaders through build is to facilitate some conversations where we can have that intergenerational. Because that's what's missing right now. And even yeah. for me coming up, mm-hmm. like that's what I'm building now. You know, it's like really the intergenerational, you know, even some of the programs like Seattle Team for Youth and stuff. My brother was in those programs. So I met people like Larry Evans and stuff right. like that. After oh, he passed yeah. away, uh, sure. Larry came over. And then I met Aaron Counts, you know, through that. Right. You know, those people that that's how I got latched on to them. A tragic situation happened to me. But these programs, the people already been doing the work that was built on the foundation of what you and your mm-hmm. forefathers and everybody else. But I think people really mm-hmm. need to pay respect mm-hmm. to people like you and others in yeah. the community to really understand like what's what, you know. It's unifying too. It right. speaks, it's unifying. You you get the, the knowledge of the elders. Right. You know, and so it's 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 more than even just the information. It, it's how it appears to people. That's that's strength. And it's community. lifelong learning, right? Because yeah, I absolutely. know me doing the work, I learned more from people I'm around, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Elders, young mm-hmm. folks or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's also right. mm-hmm. You know, to learn from them and vice versa yes, and be able to right. share the game. It's, you yes. know, Isaiah says that you're either a teacher or a student. You're either right. teaching somebody something or you're learning, right? Yeah. Which is real, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so to apply that, man, at the graduate level, man, I learned a term called praxis intervention. And that's what that's called. It's when the teacher's the learner uh, and the learner's the teacher. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that's the sort of, you know, oh, that's just cool. to put a yeah. button on that. It's right. praxis intervention. Uh, so is that social science or rocket science? I sound like rocket social science. science. That's social science. <laughs> social yeah. science for sure. <laughs> but I'm just giving you the, yeah. you know, it's like a, a theorem or a it's postulate a, right. Right. in the social mm-hmm. science. Yes. Right. We got to make it happen. Because some thing, people won't yeah. understand what you're talking about. Right. You mm-hmm. throw that at them. Huh? Then yeah. Say, you oh, can talk about coming yeah. off the porch and getting in traffic. Right. Or you can say praxis intervention. Mm-hmm. And they get it. Be right. Like, Bing. He said, Bing. You got to speak the language. You got to have that crossover language. That's it, man. That's it. So, yeah. we got a few more questions we're going to get through. Um, you know, what have you guys done, like, to take care of yourself? You know what I mean? Like, you know, self care is a big thing right now. It's a trending, mm-hmm. trending mm-hmm. thing. But, like, what yeah. have you really done, um, you know, to take That's care of yourself during this time? Like, it's a lot going mm-hmm. on. Like, what have right. you, you know? Well, to take care of myself in general, I, um, I just stay healthy, eat well, take care of myself. Uh, you know, when we were younger, man, we'd work, oh, golly, 12, 14 hours a day. You know, we were constantly on it. You had to be to make things happen. Man, you ain't supposed to tell that cat that, man. I understand. I overstand. <laughs> man, <laughs> I'll say that. We'd yeah, be up there real talk. One o'clock in the morning trying to man, put the show together. Man, two o'clock, man. Oh, but, resetting uh, the alarm, setting the alarm on and running back in. <laughs> <laughs> so they think we closed the building down. Right. Right. Come right. on, man. All that kind of stuff. I understand. Oh, I understand. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I uh, spend time with my family, my kids, my grandkids. Uh, like I say, I just try to stay healthy, which is something you have to really work at at my age. You know, right. You, gotta, you do have to work at it. You know, eat right. Um, Real talk. Yeah, I, you know, I, I get just good rest. Get good rest, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure you just, you know, you do the things that keep you healthy because I've seen other people also not do that and then they, you know, they die young, mm-hmm. die at my age. You know, a lot of brothers aren't here uh, who I've grown up with and known because of that. So, um, and you know, the health, the health, you, you have to pay close attention to your health uh, pra- practitioners because. They don't a lot of times have your best interest at heart. You know, right. you got to be on them. You got to, <laughs> you got to know how to deal with them. Also, that's a part. And of advocate it. for what you need. Exactly, and man. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. tell you, this is important too, man. Steve's mother, when we were 14, 13, man, she used to give him these huge packages <laughs> of pills. We're like, man, what is she giving this cat, man? We thought she was giving him Christmas trees and blacks and stuff, right? <laughs> but it was vitamins. And so what his mom did, man, is she started us in Yogandes on this kick around vitamins and learning right. how to take vitamins. Yeah. Vitamin B12, vitamin D3, uh, acidophilus, right. all mm-hmm. kind of different stuff. Right, right. And I she lived to be 97. 97 years old, year, man. 97, yeah. And yeah. so listening to elders about that, man. Yeah. and Because um, so, my father died when I was 15. Right. right. He was 54. She was like... 49 or so right so that's what really motivated her to get on the vitamins and and she always said the reason he died was because in his town where he grew up in Oklahoma they had the brickyard and they made all the young black boys work in the brickyard and uh, inhale all that red dust wow you know and she said that's what killed him and then his brother had the same thing had the same cancer 
he he lived longer because they had more uh, treatments. Treatments, but and, you know, by the time he got it, and that's that's all to to keep the bases on your core health man is critical because you can't give someone else what you don't possess yourself. Yeah. So yeah. I can tell you to rest, but if I'm not getting mine, mm. I'm a hypocrite. Right. Yeah. And so I would just tell brothers, man, to do that. Um, what I do every single day, and I've done it every day since I was 10, for sure, is I pray every day. Because mm. mm -hmm. my faith is important, man. If you don't have faith in something besides yourself, yeah, yeah, you're lost. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then you might have faith in your buddy. You might have faith in your child, yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, no, I, I, that's that's critically yeah. important. And so there's some practices when I was younger, man, called mm -hmm. satsang, service, and meditation. Mm -hmm. And I think that keeps my health on point. The satsang is sharing your story. Mm -hmm. The service is serving others. Right. And meditation is whatever you do, yoga, mm -hmm. aromatherapy, whatever gets you in tune with who you are. Yeah. And I would say to a lot of brothers who are leading out there, man, that's really important. You have to establish your protocols, man. You have to establish yeah. your baseline because PTSD, anxiety, um, depression, mm -hmm. if you're yeah. doing the work, if you're really doing the work, you're gonna, yeah. those things are going to hit you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just, it's coming with it. So know yeah. that that happens. Yeah. So you have to stay. You have to combat it. Is yeah. that real or not real? That's real. That's real. <laughs> okay. no. I mean, you know, I study the Bible. I'm Correct. involved in my church, but faith, praying, you know, like Nico says. And I, I heard that from him years ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Way yeah. back. Right. You know? Right. And other people who've said that, you know, that faith. And so through the years, I've come to, to, to grow in that, you know. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I included that question because, one, America, society, even within our community, we think black men don't have feelings and don't have needs, right? You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's oh, why, yeah. that's why oh, our, we're right. less than, right? And so, mm -hmm. and I just wanted, I know you guys are doing things because you guys have legacy and family and stuff that you want to take care of. And, you know, personally, I know I've been talking to Rico. He's been sharing some, <clears throat> some game with me around that. Sure. And so I just want to make sure that we're able to share that information with the community because we need to take care of ourselves, health as wealth, oh, right? Yeah. And so I, you know, I really yeah. wanted to make yeah. sure I inclu included that so we could talk talk about yoga, meditation, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, praying, whatever it is to really ground yourself and take care of yourself and make that a priority. Like I tell my grandson, because you know I had him working with me this summer. He's yeah, twelve, right? right? right. So I had him come in and we do physical work around the house, and I pay him. And um, I say, okay, so you go to school, right? So that means you're taking care of your mental, right? You're taking care of your, your academics. Mm -hmm. School's your important, intellect, yeah. right? Your intellect. Mm -hmm. And you play baseball. So you work out. You do push-ups and stuff. You keep your physical body in shape where you have a spiritual aspect to yourself. And you got to keep that in shape, too. Right. That's right. Exercise that, the That's same right. thing. So before we do this physical work, we're going to memorize this portion of Scripture in Proverbs, which teaches you how to be wise. <laughs> right, 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 right. Important, important. Mm, yeah. Because yeah. when key decision making, when key decisions come up in your life, um, everybody has a fallback position. Yeah. And your yeah. fallback position is based on what right. you develop habits doing in your life. Right. Whatever your fallback is. If your mm. fallback is mm. everybody's racist, that's going to be your fallback position. Yeah. If your fallback is I'm doing it for my son, that's your fallback position. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So you have right. to have things, man, that you can go on a moment's notice mm -hmm. and have the ability, man, to fall back on and say, this is what I fall back on and I stand on. Yeah. So yeah. when Steve and I talk about things, man, sometimes we don't agree, but the fallback position is that we're going to be friends. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether we disagree, right. agree or, or not, not we're right. going to make sure we manage that right. because we see what the result of managing the friendship and doing the work collectively right. has done for others, not for us. Right. 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 So it's a statement practically in this day. Make a statement. Let's make a statement. <laughs> make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> He's quick, man. You got to watch it. He's quick. Yeah, he's I'm, on quick. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. You know the rest of it? Yeah, he's quick. I don't know the rest, but I'm okay. on it, though. You got it. I'm on it, though. Make a statement. Um, what advice? would you give someone who's looking to get involved in community work? Mm -hmm. Just drop them the, the wisdom, smash some atoms. Mm. I, would, I would start by saying if um, it's not about the money first, mm -hmm. it's about if mm -hmm. it moves you 
if you're moved to do something, right. do that. And every task or problem in community doesn't belong to you. Right. Yeah. Too many mm-hmm. folks, man, try to do so many things. And so you got to focus. I think mm-hmm. for me, what's really helped us and supported us is focus. Right. Mm-hmm. And what mm-hmm. T- Steve has taught me, just being a good friend, man, is how to focus and target my energy because I have big energy. I'm a right. performer, stage guy, right? Jazz, R&B, funk. Mm. But there's a, f- a focus. To be a good musician, you have to practice, man, mm. your craft. Yeah. You have to focus. Right. So I would say to cats, whatever area you're in, your focus, your practice, your regimen, and learn the craft, man. Yeah. A lot of cats jump into right. the work, and they don't really know what they're doing, man. So they put mm. kids in traffic with no training. Right. Mm. So... Yeah, that's good. That's the stuff that I would say Mm -hmm. that I would offer up to young brothers and sisters. Yeah, no, I I would say the same. I'd say that that idea of training, learning, Mm -hmm. training, training, training. And, you know, I was really blessed to have worked with the city of Seattle for those 30 years. But what I really got a lot of in that time was a lot of training. Uh, Training, whether it was grant writing or whether it was, you know, how to have a difficult conversation with someone whether it was management or supervisory training. Those trainings, what they do is they allow you to step out of the work um, and look at yourself, you know, and to analyze and make some decisions about how to do this well, how to do something. But one of the reasons that we were able to, to take Langston Hughes from the community center kind of place to a cultural arts center that was regarded that way was really a training. The trainings. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> That's right. That's we got right. a grant, a, a, a grant from um, the National Endowment mm-hmm. for the Arts that allowed us to have a plan put together, right, mm-hmm. a strategic plan for Langston Hughes, which involved the community, Walt Hundley was mm-hmm. involved, mm-hmm. people who used the space, you know, all this input and then have this collective plan which said, this is how we're gonna proceed in the future. Mm. But we also got to visit other facilities. Right. We got to go to DC, we got to go to Texas, we got to see cultural centers in other places and learn about what they did. And that really helped spark the ideas for um, the, com- the, uh, the, uh, the team musical and so on. But, so training is, is critical and um, I, would just, I, don't, I don't think you can emphasize that more. So what um, do we learn, man, when you have problems with staff and teams? It's either a training problem <laughs> or a discipline problem. <laughs> right, right. We'll call it performance. <laughs> performance problem, right? No, no, it's a training or <laughs> discipline <laughs> problem. Training or discipline. <laughs> <laughs> so it yeah, is. The, yeah. the training is, is critical, man. And I say that to you and I say that to brothers and sisters out here who are, who are doing this work. Um, one of the things that experience gives you is the ability to apply that. So when you make mistakes, and you will make mistakes. Right. Man, right. we have made so many bad decisions, man, oh, man, collectively and independently. Yeah. And being able to own that and mm. move forward. Yeah. And there's something I live right. my life by called the arc. And it's called accountability, responsibility, and credibility. Mm. If you can't be accountable and responsible, the community's not going to view you as credible. Yeah, facts. Right. Right. You're always yeah, saying yeah. it's somebody else's fault, See, man. That's we made, training. That's real. <laughs> we made tremendous mistakes and errors, man. I mm-hmm. made decisions, man, that I wish I could have back today. I made decisions recently that I've discussed with both of you, right? But um, the key is is owning them, right? Mm-hmm. Learning from them, right? And right. moving forward, right? You got to move forward, man. Accept yeah. it, own it, mm-hmm. carry that, man, like a backpack. You feel me? Right. <laughs> and so when that comes up mm-hmm. again, man, I'm like, ah, I saw it. No, you ain't getting me this. I mean, you right. really have to I've do that. that. And before, that's how yeah. you acquire wisdom. Right. Yeah. Right. It's through the failures, man, not the successes. Mm-hmm. For everything we've talked about today that's been yeah. great, we've done 10 totally other things that, yes, that weren't that great. Weren't great. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Just, man. Is that <laughs> all? We got, we got doozies, man. Ooh, we got some doozies. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's life for mm-hmm. real. But right. that's, yeah. that's, that's power. That's where learning, some of your best learning comes from failures. Oh, man. man. Well, I think that's knowledge right there, too, for people to get involved. Like, it may not be, you may not create no institution. You may, there's things that, you know, but still yeah. be involved. You still can be impactful. Right. And oh, I want to yeah. echo what Rico said. That's who really, like, laced me was Larry. And 
he said the need for us is so great. They need us more than we need them in institutions, really. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And if you're real about the work, yeah. the credibility will come, That's and right. then the money's going to come because right. you know they're going to have to compensate you. So don't let the money be the motivator. Right. And right. so that's kind of how I live. You know, mm-hmm. you know the relationships, the accountability, the trust, respect, all those right. are like the, the are really the pillars that I. I live also. I, I, I have sentiments for what you said, Rico, about like, right. we all got to eat. We're in a capitalist society. We got right. bills to pay. We got that's kids right. to feed. That's right. We got to keep the lights mm-hmm. on and all that. But at the end of the day, like if that's your sole motivator, you need to go, oh, you yeah. need to go you cut grass else, or, you're you're right. something else. you know, something change else. oil quick. or something. Do something <laughs> quick. Quick. Money. Yeah, quick. Yeah. Do something else. Because do you're anymore. not only harming yourself, yeah. right. but you're harming those that you, that you claim to claim to serve right that's yeah. peace. you're harming a lot of people man that's yeah. peace and steve had mentioned to me man years ago when we were working on this man and i've never forgot it he said people give money to people they don't give money to programs or ideas right they give money, money to people. people right like larry said they will invest in you right right because they right. need you right 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 Mm-hmm. And that's Fact. been my experience yeah. around the best practice. It's not really yes. the program; it's the person Correct. implementing. That's right. right? That's right. Exactly. It's, Cause I can write this up and hand it to somebody else, right. and it's a totally different outcome. Right. That's right. Because you have to know that they're going to do what they said they're going to do. That they have integrity with it, and they're they're committed. You know, I mean, it's all wrapped in a person. Right. I mean, I've had many funders say to me, "It was about you." Right. right. This grant is about right. you. Right. You're leaving. You know. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Throw the right. brakes on, right? right. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. But yeah. that's real, though, and I think people need to understand that because sometimes yeah. they get people in the facade that it's best mm-hmm. practice or whatever, or you write this thing up, and really, like, once they know you got the credibility, yeah, and oh, then yeah. The, and they know that they know you're actually going to be able to deliver to the community, to yeah. then it's you know, and vice versa, community's going to show up too, like when you had that credibility too, because yes. you know, a lot of people that's that right. are doing mm-hmm. doing work and yeah. you know not really yeah. having that credibility. It now takes time to. to uh, Develop right. it to build right. that, right? right? It takes time to build that credibility. Yeah, we got we got tons of examples of that, man. We work with billionaires, millionaires, and I remember I had a moment that happened in which I made a decision based on integrity to leave a program. Right. Mm-hmm. The funder came, mm-hmm. and they were going to give several million dollars to this program. And it was going on sixty minutes. Oh. And yes, so they I said to me, that. "Well, you can't leave. We're going on sixty minutes." Right. I said, "No." You can't leave because you're going on 60 minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so they went on 60 minutes. They reduced their gift. They continued to support the program because they called me in and asked me because of the mm-hmm. credibility. Right. Should we still fund this program? And mm-hmm. I told them, well, there's 57 lives of young people who can no. change as a result of your funding. Mm-hmm. Don't let me be the person that's in the way of that. Yeah. But I'm not going on TV because I'm not a hypocrite. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. But fund the program, do that. Mm-hmm. I had a lifelong relationship with that guy, man. His name was Bill Gates Sr. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I had a lifelong relationship with him. He just died this year, right? Right. But that dude helped me in my consulting practice and all of that because he said, you know what? That dude right there, he's in a meeting, man. All these folks in a meeting around the table. He said, that guy right there has integrity. Right. Because mm-hmm. he knew that his money didn't matter to me. Right. Uh, you yeah, see? Yeah. yeah. Right. It was about right. community. Right. Mm-hmm. You see, I'm not about that. I'm do I what's right. right. Come on, right. man. I'm going to do what's right. And I don't Pullman matter. Porter. What right. is that? Pullman Porter training. The Pullman Porter training, man. But also yeah. had that. Yeah, I'm going to do what's right. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. I got integrity, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I hadn't mentioned this, but I, I think I do myself a disservice not yet talking a little about the time I spent with the cultural festivals in Seattle Center. Because I actually did that for 20 years. Um, right. And in that right. uh, experience, I worked with the 24 different communities. But when and, you got uh, there, there was 11. There was 11, right. When I and came, you built yeah. an additional yeah. 13 or 14. Or, yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So uh, you had to exercise integrity because I was responsible for their relationship with Seattle Center, which right. gave them resources to do their community festival. Right, mm. and the thousands of people that come to these festivals, all the communities, you know, the the Sundiata and the Chinese community and the Italian, Polish, uh, Vietnamese, you know, the, the communities. My work with them is how they were able to reside at Seattle Center right. on an annual basis. So um, it was good work. It was it was the opportunity to be able to see 
other communities and how important it is mm. to be able to, to put your culture on display right. and say we're proud of who we are because of this, right? Because of who we are and our art and our music and our dance and the fellowship that happens at those. I'll never forget seeing the an older Italian woman and uh, they were all together. I think it was the, they have a wine tasting and she, you know, you could just see the pride in being able to be who they were. Right. At this festival, because they're all Italian or mm. they're all Vietnamese, right? You know, but it 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 really did require, and so it was a learning experience as well. But it really required uh, to operate um, authentically with those groups, and I really enjoyed that. That was a fun, fun little time. So, and it sounds like you grew the program to yeah, give right. access to others, which was yeah, which yeah. Is, that's yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's revolutionary in itself, right? To be able yeah. to get thirteen other communities. Ethnicities a festival right. at Seattle Center, which yeah. is the center. You know, the you know it's really a park, right? It's it's a it, yeah, it is really. Yeah. Ultimate, it's called yeah. Seattle's Living Room. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's how yeah. they coined it, mm -hmm. right? The Seattle's Living Room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what I found was that people all because we'd meet monthly, right? We'd meet and I'd get them all together, all the leaders, and we'd have trainings. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Trainings. That's right. Actually, Rico worked with a couple of the groups. To help develop their capacity and their leadership ability, all eleven initially. Yes, right, right, right. right. <laughs> Trains for right. all eleven. Mm -hmm. I was the first one in. Yeah, yeah. and so um, working together um, again. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, people are right. gonna make that shot. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, they um, uh, people would always ask me, so how do they get together? You know, how do they get along when you have them all together in the room? And you know, the thing is, they all got along just fine between them. Right. But the, all the controversy and challenge was inside of each community. Right. That's right. That was where you saw all right. of the controversy and, you know, battling for leadership. Who was the leader? Right. That's right. And I had to make That's sure right. that we weren't being, you know, that Seattle Center giving them resource. resource we were not Creating. fueling them. Right. Mm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had to always try to manage that, you know, so... Yeah, so if, if you think it in in our roles too as friends and then work coworkers in this man, it's accepting the role. Yeah, that shows up in that moment, right? Yeah. If I'm a leader, you accept that role. Uh -huh. If he's a leader, right. I accept that role. And mm -hmm. being able to teach people to do that, man, right? Yeah. Especially when there's friendship involved, oh, man, yeah. it's really critical. That's mm. that's something that takes it takes a lot of practice, right? right? Right, but you know, yeah. being able to do that and, and love on your 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 partner, your buddy, man, yeah. when yeah. they're doing well, mm -hmm. um, and ex and expecting that the things that you do. When I did late night, I didn't want to do things, man, that's gonna make my my homie look bad. Right, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? So when I was gonna cross the line, I called the dude and said, "Hey, man, I gotta take this one to the wall." Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the kind of yeah, yeah. That was the kind of the power in having that, being able to oh, walk man. that walk with somebody. Yeah, yeah, because they were challenging times. <laughs>